Hello and welcome to Engine Adventures towing review of this 2024 Toyota Tacoma Limited. This one has that 2.4 liter turbocharged inline four cylinder, 317 foot pounds of torque at like 1700 RPM or something ridiculous. Uh, anyway, it just really has a ton of torque and 284 horsepower. Sorry, I shouldn't say a ton of torque, not a ton of horsepower, but it feels so much stronger than that because it comes on at such a low RPM. So this trailer is way too big for this truck. I wouldn't tow it normally with this. The mirrors you can see don't even get close to showing down the sides of the trailer. And I'm just using a scale ball mount here instead of a weight distribution hitch for the test to test the stability of the truck. Um, if I were using this, I would definitely get tow mirrors. And you can see there we're just about 500 pounds, right around the 500 pound mark on tongue weight. But I would get tow mirrors that stick out to see down the sides. I'd use a weight distribution hitch because this thing is just a massive trailer compared to the truck. Um, but anyway, the truck is well equipped for this. The receiver pin is only in like an inch from the face here so it's not very far in you can see how much shank is sticking out on most vehicles it's right there and then there's one so that would be two inches where you can see that little mark and then there's another little mark here at two and a half for some of those vehicles that have a two and a half inch deep pin but this one's really like inch and a half uh deep so it's pretty pretty far in there wirings here you have four pin and a seven pin cameras are not great because it's offset so when you go to hook up the trailer it does put a line on but it's like right here it's not lined up with the ball it's not programmed perfectly they need to work on that a bit um, I know they had the issue with the first Tundra sorry the first of this third generation Tundra but I think they've fixed that issue since on the Tundra and it's likely they'll do the same here on the Tacoma as they worked out all these little issues. But yes, it is off center and it should not be. That's really annoying when you're trying to hook up a trailer. Um, nice bed, plenty of storage and outlets and it's deep. So like my full arm in there, I'm five foot 10 and it takes pretty much my whole arm to get in there. Um, does have power outlets in here so you can charge maybe some smaller devices while you're driving um, and then of course the full-on power outlet in the bed the rear suspension on this thing they have switched it over to coils it's gonna be a little bit hard to see in there let me see if I can get a better shot but you can see the coil suspension there a lot of people hate coils say oh it's terrible for a truck it doesn't you know it's not for towing and whatever Coils are, in my opinion, the better option. They can be tuned. Leaf springs can be tuned really well also. But coil springs can be tuned, in my opinion, a little better. And it's it's all about spring rates and stuff like that. So you can get the same ride. I mean, if you wanted a really high load capacity and uh, stiff suspension, then you could do that with a coil the same as you can do it with a leaf. Um, I know there are differences. The leafs are a little more simple, a little more durable, typically. Uh, if you break one leaf, it's not a big deal. Whereas if you break a coil, it'll sit all the way down because your leaf pack has a whole bunch of leaves in it. But anyway, those are like not things that happen very often. But I do, in my personal opinion, I prefer the coil style suspension. Uh, it's just a little bit better. And if they set it up right with the links, then it is uh, really it can control axle hop and that kind of stuff a lot better axle wrap i should say um there's that 2.4 liter big old turbo pretty sure it was on that side i can't see now but yeah definitely big old turbo over there no hybrid on this one so i'm curious to test this with the hybrid system i think that would be really fun to do um anyway this this truck really performs pretty well so let's go ahead and get into the test I realized I didn't get any footage of the trailer brake controller while I was driving 
but you can see it on the top left hand side of the screen there. It sits behind the steering wheel. It's a little hard to see while you're driving, but it's in a spot that's really easy to reach and adjust. Once you know it's there, it's not a problem. I do like the reachability, the ease of access to it. It is a little bit hidden though. My GoPro died. I'm not sure what we caught and what we didn't get. So I'm gonna start from the freeway section. Getting up onto the freeway, it was an uphill on-ramp. I was about half throttle and it really did quite well. At the very end, I went up to three quarter throttle and merged at 65 miles an hour. Um, and then it cruised at 70 pretty well. When I'm towing for these tests, I use an adjustable height scale ball mount. It tells me the tongue weight of the trailer, which I told the same trailer and I know the tongue weight anyway. But anyway, um, I use this ball mount because it's just a standard ball mount. If you're gonna use, if you're gonna be towing a trailer like this with a truck of this size, I highly, highly, highly recommend getting a weight distribution hitch with sway control. The one I use is the equalizer. I've tested a ton of them. That one is by far my favorite for like long-term durability. Uh, just, you know, it's a hitch you keep forever hand on down to your kids and it works, it works really well. I have tested other hitches. There was maybe one or two that had better sway control, but they were wearing very quickly and just didn't have the durability of the equalizer. So maybe when they're brand new, they're, they perform well, but after even just a season of use. Uh, anyway, that's why I use the equalizer. But I don't do that in these tests because those hitches provide so much more stability and control that you don't get as much information about the truck and its capabilities because the hitch is covering or, or protecting a lot of that. It's adding a lot of capability to the truck. So when I'm doing this, I'm just using the scale ball mount, um, which is pretty awesome in itself, but it definitely doesn't provide any weight distribution or sway control benefits. This trailer's only a little under 5,000 pounds, a little over 500 pound tongue weight right now, and it is Sorry, I gotta turn here. It is a billboard, so it's huge, especially at high speeds. You get really bad gas mileage, but overall, it does quite well. Let's talk about the gauges here for a minute. So, right now, I have up the oil temperature, oil pressure, battery, fuel economy, or uh, fuel tank, which I, these ones on the bottom are always up, as far as I know, and then. The, on this side, oil pressure and coolant temperature. So then I have the trailer brake controller set there. If I go over to this other screen, we have the turbo boost off-road kind of pitch and roll pages. And then on this one, we have the trip meter. So that's how I set it up. I have, I'm averaging 8.4 miles per gallon right now. We'll see how it goes. Um, this engine has just been really good. Like I love the drivability of it. Fuel mileage has been okay, empty. I was around 17, 18 miles per gallon. Um, towing, we'll get a better number at the end of this test, but right now we're at 8.4. All right, here we go up the steep grade. We're going to the very top of the hill over there. It doesn't look high from here, but it's a couple thousand feet above. Beautiful red tail hawk right there. I don't know if it came in. Anyway, um, won't be any snow up there today, I don't think. On Well, at least on the roads, there shouldn't be any snow at all. Uh, there might be elsewhere. It looks like the lanes are closed. Right lane. Um, anyway, this test is pretty good. If we're sitting this low RPM the whole way, I will be very happy. So speed limit's 40, uh, 40. It used to be 45. Um, and that speed, tends to be right in between gears for a lot of vehicles. This one, 317 horsepower, 287, 284, sorry, 317 foot-pounds of torque. I wanna say 284 or 287 horsepower, but I mean, look at this thing, it just, just chilling. I did have to downshift right there. Eight-speed automatic, and it's about right. So the Ford's 10-speed, I have issues with. GM does a little better with the 10 speed, but 8 speed seems to be kind of the sweet spot for me. With a 6 speed, you're missing out on a little bit of the range, especially because they try and give you, you know, 70 miles an hour, they want you at 1500 RPM or something in your 6 gear, and so uh, the, the wider, as you get to the top, the gear spread quite a bit on a 6 speed, but on the 8 speed, it fills in those gaps quite nicely. 
and you're able to keep a better, smoother transition or drive, you're not jumping up and down gears a lot. I actually found myself picking up a little bit too much speed, so I slowed it down a little bit. But again, I mean, we're sitting between two and 3,000 RPM. Pulling this trailer up this hill is, is uh, quite a bit of work, and it's really just doing it no problem. Like, I, I don't feel like this is a struggle at all. It does drink fuel when it does this. I mean, we're sitting at three or four miles per gallon uh, currently, the average over the whole towing trip so far, 7.4. We'll make up for some of that on the way back down, but these turbo engines te seem to, or tend to, drink a little bit more fuel, but you get the benefits of that power as you're climbing. And I, I am in tow haul mode, so there's a tow haul mode button right here. I'm in tow haul mode, but beyond that, I haven't done anything. So I'm not manually shifting or anything, it's just in drive. Uh, when we come down the hill, we might play around with that a little bit, but uh, going up, I'm just driving it as Toyota tuned it to drive, and so far, very impressed. Um, I would say that for this portion of the test, it is at least on par with the brand new Colorado, which was the best one I'd tested to this point. The front, or the Ranger was pretty close in towing, uh, but the power of that Colorado, and just the drivability was really nice. A little better than the Ranger, and I would put this on par with that. So I really want to test the hybrid version, uh, just to see if there's really much difference in the towing, like the drive feel while towing. Uh, the hybrid Sequoia was incredible. Like I just loved driving that. I have driven a non-hybrid Tundra. It did pretty good with those ones. The, the Tundra and the LX were both the same liter, same 3.5 liter, well, 3.4 liter twin turbo V6 that's in the Sequoia, but they didn't have the hybrid system. And that hybrid system just made a huge difference, especially off the line. Um, and I'm not saying like flooring it everywhere you go off the line. I'm saying just for everyday drivability, it was so much better to drive with the hybrid system. Even compared to the Lexus LS sedan, having the hybrid system in the Sequoia just greatly outperformed the drivability of all those other vehicles without the hybrid. And they've really tuned that turbo. I mean, it puts out a lot of power, that the V6 twin turbo. It, I mean, so there's a little bit of turbo lag and it gets a little jumpy, which is what I didn't like. In this one, I don't notice all that. It's a big turbo on a small engine, but I really don't notice the jumpiness at all. A little bit smoggy today. I was hoping for a very clear day, but it's pretty good. Um, anyway, on this one, you don't notice a turbo lag much, and it's kind of like a normal or a little bit higher torque than normal. And then when the turbo hits, it's like, oh, there's extra power there beyond what you would expect. So. The normal driving when you're not in boost feels good. I really, I don't know how Toyota's tuned it so well with this one, but Chevy did a really good job on that Colorado. That same, the engine in the Colorado obviously was in the Silverado for a while, so they've had time to tune it. But uh, in this one, it's a newer engine and doing quite well. All right, now we're doing the downhill. I'm just in drive still. Um, there will be probably some manual downshifting. We'll see how it goes. Again, this trailer is so big that it provides a lot of wind resistance and even going downhill, you don't pick up a ton of speed, but just up here when the road divides, there's a little section that gets real steep and we'll see if we can get that one uh, maybe to hold the brake long enough that it will start to downshift. Really though, again, this trailer is just so big. I need to maybe try this with a flatbed that doesn't have so much wind resistance but I love the wind resistance on this trailer for testing towing stability flatbeds you know you get a really low trailer with weight down low it's just gonna inherently be more stable than this trailer with the high really high front really high sides and the weight is actually kind of up high on this thing as well so I did downshift here <clears throat> um, just one gear though. Let's see if it goes down. Well, we're gonna let it pick up speed because it gets even steeper right here in just a moment. 
It's definitely pretty smoggy out on this side of the valley for sure. So we're gonna go let's see if it downshifts. And it's not really downshifting on its own. So most vehicles would downshift right there, most of these mid-sized trucks, but again, it's just not like I I didn't need it. I wasn't pushing hard on the brakes and it wasn't long enough that I was constantly on the brakes for it to downshift there. So and then the only so there's one other spot we're gonna pull up and stop and it's kind of on a steeper downhill part, but we'll see if it needs the brakes there as well. Sorry if it if it does downshift there. It says 8% grade. Some of the other little sections are steeper, but this is 8% for, you can see, quite a while, about a mile. Um, okay, so I'm on the brake, and we're really not downshifting at all. So, um, let me, there, it did downshift, but let me manually downshift. And it doesn't seem real strong on the grade braking there. Did okay but it wasn't real strong on that so i didn't use this at all i've used it on the tundra i didn't like it um most of the rear like the backup aids are okay at best um it helps you this one helps you back straight and all that stuff uh, let's see there you go it does have the backup guide you have to go through all that to get it set up which is part of the reason why i haven't done it but anyway It'll back you in a straight line, so if you kind of get the trailer where you want it to go, even so if your truck's straight and your trailer's sideways, it'll adjust the truck to line that up and push the trailer back where it needs to go. It's a pretty good system, but at least in my experience in testing with two different trailers on the Tundra, I didn't perform super well, and today I just don't have the, the time to go through it all. Um, anyway, it's probably a good system for people just learning how to tow um, but just like most of the driver aids it's better for you to just learn how to drive uh, when these systems start to beep and go out I actually saw a video yesterday of um, someone driving on the freeway she was in the fast lane and there was a car coming up on her kind of quick so she was gonna change lanes get out of the way and her sensors beeped but there was no one next to her so instead of changing lanes she's she put her blinker on, started to change, came back into her lane, and the car behind her was obviously speeding, driving a little reckless, but he ended up rear-ending her because he thought she was going to move out of the way, and then she jumped back in the lane real quick. Definitely human error involved there, but also those sensors, it scared her when it went off, making her think that there was someone right next to her in the blind spot, and then she was going to hit them, so she, she moved back into her lane. Um, these sensors are making people rely too much on stuff and when they go off they'll scare you I, I mean it happens to me when these sensors go off so again these types of systems the electronic aids are beneficial but they have their limitations and it's better to in my opinion learn how to drive without all of this stuff and then once you get that down maybe add these in for the additional safety features the one exception to that is the backup camera I don't know that's probably saved plenty of lives by having a backup camera um, definitely I mean my daily driver doesn't have one but it is nice to have uh, especially on these newer bigger vehicles the windows are smaller on the rear uh, it's harder you know to see around them having the backup camera really makes a big difference for having that rearward visibility and being safe backing out of parking stalls or driveways or whatever it may be um, again technology is great but it doesn't always work how you want it to how it should and it's not predictable in many ways which can make it more dangerous because predictability is what people you know if you're predictable around people they know what to expect once you start doing unpredictable things it makes it you just don't know what they're going to do and it could be more dangerous so that's my whole big old spiel on why electronic aids are not the best option for most people they've tried with the lines and it starts kind of on the left side of the ball and then it goes to the right side of the post here and the this is the tongue jack it's dead center on the trailer so the fact that it's off center on this side and off center the other way they've tried to correct it but 
Anyway, it's just not perfect. Whenever you have an offset camera, you can try with the software. Some people have actually done it pretty well with the software, but what I've seen, it really hasn't been that good. And maybe this view is slightly better, but you can still see because of the off center and nothing lines up perfectly. So if you're back here trying to line up your trailer, if your trailer is that far away, it's off to the side a little bit and you can kind of adjust to make it follow that green line, but still it's just a little bit not perfect. All right, average fuel mileage is 9.5 MPG per the computer. Uh, it's a little lower than some of the others and kind of be expected with all the torque and power in this thing but and again per the computer i didn't fuel it up so i don't have a very accurate uh, system there thank you for watching engine adventures review of this 2024 toyota tacoma limited it does have pretty nice ride when it's empty it's a little stiff but here with the trailer uh, it's about 500 pound tongue weight you can see it's squatted down a little bit uh, it's about right for this truck. I mean, it smoothed out the ride quite a bit uh, having that extra tongue weight, but overall it towed pretty darn well. So it wasn't maybe quite as good as the Colorado, the new 2023-2024 Colorado, uh, whatever the newest generation is, but it was really close. And I'm curious to test one of these with the hybrid to see how well that does. But as far as power, I can't believe how quickly the power comes on with this engine. Uh, it's a big turbo on a small engine. Usually you have a lot of turbo lag with that, but on this thing, it's tuned. It, it just performs really well and you feel it more when the turbo kicks in and gets up in the higher rpm but when you're normally driving it it just does excellent so if you liked what you saw be sure to hit subscribe ring the bell so you get notifications when we post new videos give me a thumbs up and comment down below if you didn't like it do all that stuff but comment and let me know why you gave me a thumbs down uh, why you didn't like it what you want to see different in the testing uh, again love this truck i really appreciate you guys watching have a great day